Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. We're here taking a look at viewer submitted videos of the power lifts, the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. We're going to put them up on the screen behind me, and I'm going to give everybody my advice on how they can become more efficient lifters. If you're interested in submitting and being chosen for Form Check Friday, you can go ahead and click the annotation on screen right now, and there will be a video with directions on how to be selected. So we're going to start off with where we left off last week, which is, which is with Matej. Uh, now Matej is, uh, let's see here. Uh, he says he chicken wings and his hips shoot up. So we'll just kind of go off of that, uh, his sort of self-diagnosis here. And let's see how it looks. Now, it's very, very slight, Matej. I don't think that there's that much of the hips shooting up, uh, at least to begin with. Now, if you find this intensifies as we get heavier or more fatigued. The biggest thing to remember is keep some pressure through your forefoot and just keep the knees forward as you drive up out of the hole. So on some reps where your hips shoot up, the knees pop back, which causes the hips to pop up. I don't think that your chicken wings or that your upper back or shoulder position is off at all. Uh, I think when you get into the bottom and through the majority of your squat, uh, your arm position actually looks quite good. So don't really see too much wrong with that squat uh, at all, really. Depth looks good, positioning looks good. If you find the hips are shooting up more than this, like I said, keep the knees forward as you change directions, keep some pressure through that forefoot, and you're laughing, my man. Next, we have Lucas doing some bench press. Uh, he says he's been powerlifting for two years, 22 years old, and this is 120 kilos for a double. So, First things first, we'll take a look at the unrack. It looks like a pretty good setup here. We got some leg drive, unracks with the hips up, which is something that I advocate for. Making sure that we're holding it lockout, nice big breath, good brace. Yeah, I mean, there's always a question when I see bench presses submitted, and that is, were you trying to do a competition bench press, right? Because if so, we definitely didn't pause on the chest here. Yes, it was a nice light touch. That's good. Bar path looks like it's probably acceptable there. But uh, if we're looking to do a competition bench press or emulate the competition bench press, then we're definitely not pausing long enough. Now the second rep, as we came up, I can tell by the way the elbows flare more than the bar moves. Generally, we want to see like a relatively diagonal bar path backwards or sort of a curving bar path backwards. So when the elbows move a bunch before the bar starts moving, generally means we're losing shoulder position. But this was also just a really heavy set. Looks like a total 10 RPE here. So um, I think one thing to be conscious of is just maintaining back position. Another is going to be becoming a little bit more calm and used to keeping that bar on the chest for half a second, not rushing up off the chest and skipping pauses. Um, but again, I don't know if this was intended to be a pause. If this was intentionally a touch and go, uh, touch and go bench press, then that's fine. If this was supposed to be your comp bench variation, I would advocate for a longer pause. Uh, leg drive looks good. It doesn't look like the butt's coming up. However, we are contributing to maintaining the arch with the legs. Just looks like a really heavy rep and maybe we lost a little bit of shoulder position, so. Ruben is doing some deadlifts here. Uh, he says he's been deadlifting for about a month. Uh, month, sorry. He's 6'3". Uh, he says he's 68 kilos and this is 110 for a set of five. Now, honestly, the deadlifts don't look that bad, man. We're, we're starting from a pretty high hip position here and subsequent reps, we're kind of touching and going. So we're getting into, a, honestly, a better start position. I'd like to see more of your reps start about here. Okay, so. See how much tension we've created? You can see, because you're, you're quite lean, we can see that there's a lot of tension created here. This is good. Now, the, the next thing I want you to stop doing is quit the touch and go, right? You're kind of tapping or bouncing off the platform and then going through your deadlifts. Make sure you're coming to a dead stop each time. Try and start from this like nice upright position. This looks pretty good to me. Um, and try to be consistent from rep to rep, right? I want you to let that bar come to a dead stop. Take a second, take a breath reset your position so that you can get into the habit of creating the same position every time and and being uh, having control over that position so dictating the position yourself as opposed to kind of being in very different positions from start to finish right now the next thing uh there was one more thing i wanted to talk about and that is the lockout so it looks like you're very far forward the bar is kind of out front and you can see 
Uh, I'd like for you to pull your shoulders through, squeeze your glutes through more so that you can get a little more flat on your foot and a little more fully locked out. I think in most powerlifting federations, if you are interested in competing at some point, it's going to be a good habit to get into to finish those lockouts more. It does look like we can get a little bit more hip extension and a little bit more kind of pulling the shoulders back to get to a sort of fully locked out position. Next up we have Marcus. Marcus says he spent about two years training now. Uh, this is 95 for a set of six. He says his back gives up first. Uh, and then he talks about how he's tried low bar before. He's been told that his low bar technique is better, um, but he says high bar is way more comfortable. So these are some high bar squats. And he says that his back kind of gives out first and foremost. So uh, unrack I think looks okay. It looks like we're in a decent position here, right? We've got a good brace into the bar. You can see uh, even the fabric of his shirt kind of bunches up before he initiates uh, the the unrack, telling me that he's created a good sort of upper back position. Now, the stance looks almost awkwardly narrow, uh, and I do think there's a bit of a lack of control into the bottom, right? So I think number one, we could maybe widen the stance out a little bit. Again, that's kind of a generalization. Um, the other thing is going to be that yes, we're getting a really good bounce out of the bottom, but to get that bounce, we're, we're a lot, there's a lot of looseness going into that bounce. We also just changed which direction we're looking. So, um, it's tough with the mirror, I'm not a huge fan of squatting in front of a mirror. If you can, uh, find a place where you can squat without looking at yourself in the mirror, cause it's very distracting. And, uh, in most settings where, uh, you know, you're going to compete, uh, or use, I guess this strength skill coordination, you're not gonna be able to observe it happening. So you're gonna wanna know without looking how your body's positioned and how things are moving. So it can be a really important skill to learn um, to squat without a mirror. And also because you're looking, you know, you're kind of changing where you're looking throughout. That's another thing I would work on trying to be more consistent with. Now I can't really tell you whether low bar or high bar is better. These high bar squats look pretty good. Um, it's just, we get to about halfway through and then we really just kind of fall into the bottom, which for high bar isn't a bad thing. You know, um, there's often a lot more utility to that stretch reflex, but the looser we are, the harder we hit that bottom, the tighter we need to be in this upper back. And the more you can see yourself kind of getting almost pitched forward and having to really kind of refine that tightness as you hit that sticking point. So just things to be conscious of more than anything. Um, how much stretch reflex you're using will dictate how much tightness or, or will have sort of an inverse relationship with how much tightness you're maintaining. And um, I would just mess around with both high bar and low bar for a long time. Uh, if, you, if you don't really have a clear idea, um, then uh, you can benefit from doing both. Program them on different days, use different overall maxes for them. And uh, before long, one will definitely emerge the clear winner. All right, Anders uh, has been lifting for about nine months. Uh, weighs 102 kilos. He had a shoulder injury in 2011, and this is 100 kilos for uh, an RPE7, he called it. So let's take a look. Number one, I think we're losing a bit of position out of the rack. I think we could be tighter on the unrack. See how we're kind of just popping forward just a little bit. It's very slight, but I think we could maintain more tension. We're also getting to just above the chest and then using a bounce. So it's, it's almost the opposite of a pause bench. Um, we're kind of like controlling it for a large majority of the range of motion, which is really good, but I'd like to see you do some paused work. Um, and again, I have a very strong bias towards powerlifting performance. So that's what's driving a lot of this critique. If you have no interest in ever competing in powerlifting, don't worry about pausing your benches. Um, However, you could use a paused bench as an accessory movement. Uh, it's a very great way to build strength off the chest. Um, obviously spending time in an isometric contraction at a specific joint angle will strengthen that specific joint angle. So, you know, if you want to get strong on the chest, you pause on the chest, makes sense. Um, but yeah, but so the control on the way down is good. The touch point is good. Uh, there is that little bit of a bounce. So again, if this is touch and go, great, keep it up. If this is your comp pause bench and you're looking to be a power lifter, you need to pause better. So bit of a distinction to be made there. Uh, bar path looks good. The touch point, like I said, is consistent. The only other thing I'd say is that the legs could probably be contributing more. 
Now, we wanna make sure that our legs are driving us up the bench, that we're actually pushing into the ground. And here it looks like, yes, you've pulled them really far back. So uh, you'll, you'll get a little bit of that sort of extension here, but are the legs actually contributing to keeping your chest bigger and up into the bar at all? Maybe, maybe not. I would play around with different foot positions so that you can actually get some tension and some pressure pushing back and up this way um, through your body so that you can keep this chest high, you can keep this tension on the traps here. And uh, that's kind of more what I try to get at when I'm coaching leg drive in the bench press. All right, now we have Morgan. Uh, Morgan's 20 years old. He's doing some sumo here. He's wondering about his stance width. He's wondering about the rounding in his back and he's wondering if his lockout is okay. Uh, so this is 160 for a double at an RPE 9.5, he says. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this play through once more. We're gonna ask everybody to go ahead and head into the comments section below. Give your constructive criticisms, cues, and tips for Mr. Morgan here. And um, hopefully we can offer some advice. What'll happen is next week, we will start off with Morgan and I will give my advice on it and we'll go from there. If you all like this style of content, make sure to stop by our live stream every set, sorry, every Friday at uh, 10 a.m. MST on our YouTube and Twitch channels. You can head over to twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell and catch us live there. Submit your videos and have them critiqued live. Thanks everybody for watching and we will see y'all next week for Form Check Friday. <laughs>